Hi guys, uh, you're looking at a uh, little bit of Hammer Tone Amps uh, World Headquarters, such as it is. Um, I had a couple of bass amps come in to the shop today that I that need repair. One of which I'm very excited about, and one I'm not. Um, anyway, we'll uh, we'll skip on past that, and I want to show you the thing that I am very excited about getting my hands on. This is a Fender Bassman 10 Silverface, um, which uh, this product was made uh, in the 70s, I think maybe from 72 to 79. Um, anyway, I haven't turned it on or, or done anything to it yet. The owner said it's just went dead on him. Um, and he also claims that he has had this amp for 40 years and never done anything to it except change the, the lamp inside that bulb socket, which means he's gotten 40 years of use out of the original tubes. And we'll... Uh, I'm going to get a obviously a closer look at that going forward, but that's a pretty amazing record. Now this guy um, is a player. I think he plays in his church, and uh, you know he's taken this plays, you know small town gigs, um, so on and so forth. So it's not everyday use, but 40 years on the same pair of tubes, uh, or same set of tubes, excuse me, it's got to be pretty amazing. So we'll, uh, I'm going to try to document a diagnostics on this, and if this turns out, I'll post the video. Um, if it doesn't, um, you'll never know it. <laughs> okay guys, back again. Um, like I said, I'm just trying to document what I'm going to do here. Got the back off of this thing. I'm going to go ahead and test these tubes. Um, as the owner, like I said, the owner said he has never had any work done on this amp in 40 years. And I'm looking at these RCA tubes, and I think I believe it. Speaker jack, get that out of the way. Wow. RCA tubes across the board. Fantastic. Here's another look at that label. The classic Fender label. These power tubes are also RCAs. 6L6 is I suppose. Yes. There we go. Okay, here's my beloved Hickok 533A. Um, just show this as an example of testing these tubes. This is a 7025, uh, which is a super version of a 12AX7, basically. Um, it should score out uh, at about 1200 to 1300, 1250 or so, and fail. Uh, would consider this too bad if it landed down around 825. Uh, it's hovering right around 900. Micromos on the scale. We're ignoring the uh, red and black scale, by the way, and reading the the top row of numbers there. Um, so it's it's a weak tube, but uh, still usable. I've got the amp upside down on my bench right now to help facilitate getting the chassis out. Uh, chassis bolts are out. It's loose. I uh, just wanted to give you a quick view here of what was in the side of the box. 
um, to make that out mouse detritus uh, mouse bait looks like quite a few mouse turds uh, that's just what's landed on the table There's a little bit more on the floor um, got some rust here These speaker drivers are showing the accumulation of uh, 40 years I don't think the grill's ever been off best I can tell um, the drivers seem okay I don't get any rubbing noises um, giving them a general push here except on this one I think you can hear it now let's see the voice coil rubbing but I think it may be some accumulated mouse stuff in there I'm gonna have to take that out and take a look uh, continuing with the preliminary preliminary diagnostics on this uh, Fender Baseman 10. Uh, I've got the chassis out, looked over a little bit, I'll let you guys look it over a little bit. Um, it's, in my opinion, <clears throat> very good shape. Um, Very simple circuit, simple schematic, not a lot of extras in there. Um, I've scanned this pretty closely, and I don't, uh, you know, the pr preliminarily looking for burned resistors, um, uh, failed solder joint, uh, any sort of damaged component and I don't see it. Uh, preliminarily the wiring looks nice. Power transformer here. Uh, looks like it might have leaked. Well, not really. Um, these film capacitors more or less uh, orange drop type. They're not orange, obviously. They're probably all fine. These are probably all fine. Um, <laughs> you know, the biggest, the cheesiest part about these amps is these silly uh, fiberboard uh, things that they they built their circuits on. You see how they've swelled up and over the years absorbing uh, moisture and so on, and are bowed up in the middle. Um, but overall this thing looks very nice inside I don't nothing jumps out at me right off the bat to suggest that uh, something's gone toasty in here now the uh, the owner reports that the thing just went dead um, lights up uh, power light comes on tubes light up no output is what he's saying. Um, I think we pointed out some of these, a couple of these pots are really loose. I will tighten all these pots. Of course, um, service all the pots or, or uh, run some cleaner, cleaner lube into all the pots since it's on the bench and it's never been worked on in 40 years. So all the tubes were checked and um, we're fine. The uh, look at these things RCA uh, worth a fortune if you found NOS tubes like this today the uh, the preamp tubes the 7025s test a little bit weak uh, but my um, uh, a lot of those Hickox are a little bit shaky on 
the 12 ax 7 tube types anyway so we're gonna we're gonna give them the benefit of the doubt for the time being continuing our inspection of this baseman 10 um, and a lot of a lot of amp diagnostics is just observation and that's what I've been doing for a couple hours on this thing is just looking it over closely to, to uh, see if anything obvious jumps out in terms of failure and as I've said already it's nothing has and uh, I suppose that's good and bad um, I'd much rather have seen a, a blown up cathode resistor or something that uh, we could take care of quickly and inexpensively for this guy power transformer uh, forgive my camera work here one-handed this I thought might be uh, some overheating type failure but I believe that's some of the original shellac from when that was originally dipped um, power transformer obviously output transformer same thing it's got a lot of a lot of cruddy looking shellac on it but um, that's from when it was originally dipped I'm sure bias adjustment pot right here we'll take care of that at some point these power caps Mallory's uh, very pretty clean looking um, 40 years old they ought to be replaced and I'll they're, they're, they're way past needing to be replaced and I'll recommend that to the owner I don't know uh, strikes me as not the kind of guy that's going to invest a lot of money in bringing this refurbishing this thing back to the way it ought to be um, they test value wise uh, within 10% of their rating um, which is good. They uh, ran an ESR meter on last night and they all got very nice low ESRs. Um, if you look here, I'm sorry about the camera work again. Uh, these little bumps popping out on the end here, that's um, typically the clue to us that the uh, electrolytic the dielectric uh, sauce is uh, failing and pressure is building up inside these caps now like I say they they um, value wise and ESR wise they test fine if this were mine or if I were making the decision I would if we got it open I'd replace these caps uh, in an instant we'll see what the owner says tube sock Okay, fellas, back again with step whatever. We might be up to about step 8 or 10 on this uh, pre preliminary diagnostic on this Baseman 10. Uh, as you can see, got her turned on. Tubes are lit. You can't see the fire in the preamp tube, but trust me, they're lit up. Uh, you can see it in that one. Um, Plugged into a dummy load, that's an 8 ohm, 120 watt, theoretically. Um, wire wound resistor, got that on eBay. Handy. A couple of those in series. Give you 16 ohms, a couple of them in parallel, give you 4 ohms. So I keep an extra one handy here. To, uh, to do stuff like that, but we're looking, we're sitting on a, in an 8 ohm jack and plugged into an 8 ohm dummy load. I will tell you that I have plugged this thing into a, uh, just a few minutes ago, I had it plugged into a speaker cabinet and I got, uh, as the owner reported, absolutely no output, no hum, no nothing. Um, I'm starting to think about the output transformer being bad but uh, that's yet to be determined um, checking for none of these are hot at all um, just 
the first thing I did, the, the, the power transformer is cold. This is cold. All right. Now, what I'm uh, set up to do here is uh, do some quick voltage checks. And you'll note I've got some test sockets set in the amp for making voltage checks. These things are very handy. If you take a close look, there's a uh, test point matching every tube pin. I'm assuming most of you have seen these before, but if you haven't, the pins are numbered, matching the tube pins. That one you can see well. Some of the others do not show up well on camera. But, um, if you look closely, you can see the, the pin numbers. Now, now, I've made myself a cheat sheet here uh, just to, to do this quickly, and I've already, as you can see, I've already made some voltage checks. Uh, but on the, on the power tubes, uh, we're primarily concerned with pins 3, 4, and 5, which would be the plate and the screen grid, and the grids, which should have a negative bias number. Uh, and I've checked the schematic trying to determine um, approximate uh, the approximate voltages we need. And these, I've got two versions of this schematic, and they're, neither one of them is really good. But you can see there the input or the output transformer. The plates should be at about 450 volts. Screen grids on this, I'm pretty sure say 470, which is, uh, in my opinion, theoretically not correct. Plates on the uh, face splitter, 300. Um, and you can't tell out here, but the plates uh, on the other, well there's one you can see at 240 volts and all the preamp tubes I think the plates are supposed to be 240 volts. So we're going to make a quick check of that. Um, try to set my multimeter up here where you can see it and uh, set on DC voltage. Okay. All right. And uh, I'm not going to do all these. Like I said, I've already done them before, but we'll check the uh, We'll check the plates. I'm going to switch hands here. One of my hands should be in my pocket in this circumstance, but it's holding the camera. Um, pin 3, this power tube, which should be at about 450 volts, 484. And that's a little high. Not outrageous for 6L6s, but uh, higher than was intended by Bender. Here's the other one at 41. Back to the first one, 484. Okay. Uh, pin 4, which is the screen grids, 460, as opposed to the plate voltage of 484. I kind of like that difference. That screen grids will be a little lower than the plates. 460 on the other one, as opposed to 481. Very nice. Pin 5, <clears throat> which is the grids, and uh, this is a fixed bias amp. The, um, I'm not going to try to show you pin 5, but uh, uh, I can't read the uh, schematic very well. I think these ought to be at roughly minus 48. There's that one. There's the second one. I'll show you. I'll try to show you what I'm doing. Without killing myself. Pin five on this one. All right. Those uh, plate voltages are a little high, but uh, nothing to write home about, I don't think. And uh, just a quick summary: the uh, plates on the phase splitter run about 360 volts. That's a little high as well. And working my way out to the preamp tubes. That's um, V2, should be about 240, hmm. let's try V1, 240, yeah that's good, that'd be fine, 250 is a good number for a 12AX7, let's go back to V2, I'm cross armed here, so I'm sorry for the shaky camera, that's pin 1 on V2, 177, pin 6 on V2, Another 
closely matched. Uh, we're just going to make, I'm going to make note of all that, which I've done over here. Um, okay, fellas, back again. I was, um, wasn't going to video this, and uh, I'm just going to show you what's going on here. I, uh, this is kind of a hard thing to do with, I need two hands, and I need four hands, and uh, got to hold the camera and, and work at the same time, but I, I spotted something here. I, thought you might be interested in. There's the four screws that came out of this speaker right here. And this, I heard, I'm hearing stuff rattling around in here. Junk, trash. We already have the evidence of the mice haven't been in this thing. These are uh, mouse holes for sure. Um, but I uh, pulled these screws and lifted this up. And look what I got right here. That's some tin foil. My camera doesn't focus very on black things, but uh, there's tin foil pieces uh, laying in that speaker cavity there, kind of chewed up, mouse chewed. I don't have enough light, but and there's, can you hear that? As I turn this thing over, there's stuff falling out of the core of this speaker. Um, might as well get a look at these. Don't know that my camera's going to focus on that. Here it goes. Looks like 50th week of 73. About right. I think this amp, they started making this amp in 72. Um, this is a post Leo amp, uh, CBS, what you call a CBS amp. Um, anyway, I uh, wasn't asked to do it, but I'm going to clean this thing out a little bit and get the trash out of it. I've got this one speaker here that sounds like the voice calls dragging. Maybe it's just because it had a lot of trash in it. We'll see. Back again, fellas. And it turns out this video is not going to be quite as instructive as I had hoped. Uh, maybe you had hoped. While I was off camera, I, uh, and in preparation for uh, getting out the heavy artillery, so to speak, and when I say that, I mean, I don't mean uh, a hammer, I mean a signal generator, oscilloscope, those types of things. I was going to start a little. Uh, signal tracing project, but prior to that, I went ahead and, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, initiate a little of my standard amplifier cleanup and overhaul procedure, and um, in the process, I fixed it. Um, if you'll recall from the earlier part of the video, uh, or videos, uh, two or three of these pots were really loose. It turns out a couple of the uh, pots were just hanging in there. The, the nut uh, had actually come completely unwound on the pots, these two right here, in fact. Uh, a couple others were slightly loose. A couple of the jacks were a little bit loose. Forty years of life in the fast lane uh, on this amp had, uh, with no maintenance, had created those scenarios. So. To uh, prepare for what I was thinking was going to be some serious diagnostics, I went ahead and took off the knobs, tightened all these pots, tightened the jacks, two, four, six jacks, um, and then ran in uh, a tuner cleaner on all the pots, uh, conductive cleaner and lubricator on them, did the normal maintenance procedure on on old pots, same thing with the jacks, use a little deoxid on them to clean them up a little bit. And I noticed down in this area where the loose pots were, a couple of these solder joints looked a little flaky, a little dry, a little cracked. I went ahead and reflowed two or three solder joints uh, or more on some of these pots. Um, 
put the knobs back on plugged in some speakers turned it on plugged in the signal generator right here and lo and behold I assume you can hear that I've got signal um, so it was one of those uh, easy fixes so to speak although it's not totally obvious what the fix was by the way while I was in here I scraped most of the old solder flux off of this um, the turret board here the outlet board if you go back and look at the early part of the video where I was showing the outlet board you'll notice a lot of solder flux uh, rather sloppy job on a lot of this uh, well, there was, there was no flux cleanup, I guess is the best way to put it. And that kind of irritates me. I think there's a chance you take, for example, these two closely aligned points here. There was flux totally between them. Um, I know the stuff we're using today is not uh, theoretically not conductive, um, but who knows what they were using back in the early 70s. Um, that's was part of my cleanup procedure was to scrape all the excess flux off of the outlet board along with the other things I've told you about so far and in, in doing all that the amp has come back to life I've checked all the all the input jacks at this point all the pots sound great they're not great they sound good enough um, so this one in terms of the original complaint has been repaired. 